Good afternoon, it's three o'clock and welcome to today's Together Unlocked. I am your regular host, Josh Sergener. Um, although unlike our normal shows, I am not joined by the artists Julie Newman, Drew Gosling and Robin Sergener. Uh, I am instead uh, alone again uh, for this second youth takeover episode. Um, we've got a good show coming up for you today with lots of different bits and pieces. Uh, there's a couple of interview pieces, um, there's some music, we've got some photography uh, slideshows, uh, as well as our normal join in from home video. So, a little bit of audio description before we crack on with our first piece. Uh, as I said, I'm Josh Sergener, I'm wearing a uh, dark blue, kind of navy um, hooded jacket. Um, that is a USA basketball jacket and it has the logo. Uh, on the left hand breast uh, and then there is a um, USA flag uh, on the left hand sleeve as well just in shot. Uh, I have long blonde hair that's kind of brushed over uh, and brushed back slightly and is in somewhat need of a haircut. So introducing our first clip so this is the first part of a two-part uh, interview or chat that I did uh, with Jessica Starnes so this first segment, we talk a little bit about the art project um, that Jess came onto the show to talk about um, back in June. So she's now finished that. So we're catching up with Jess and finding out a little bit more about that project. So today we're joined by Jess Starnes. So Jess, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit, tell the viewers who you are? artist who's, whose practice is, is mostly collaborative and participatory so I, um, I engage others um, to make um, art with, with me. Um, I usually create art to highlight I guess inequalities for disabled people. Cool so on that kind of idea around kind of the inequalities and I think it links quite well into I think most schools go back this week mm -hmm. um, and show's going out on Wednesday, so I think most schools go back tomorrow, I believe, and there were lots of kind of year sevens that will be going in today for their kind of induction days in secondary school. Um, so that links into a piece of work that you've just done around um, inclusive education, that's right, isn't it? Yes, yeah, that's right. So um, on the 23rd of July of this year, it marked the 50th anniversary of the Education of Handicapped Children's Act of 1970. And this act meant that um, ch children of all compulsory school age had a right to an education. Um, so I, I wanted to get to commemorate the act, and um, and um, as I couldn't be with people because when I was making the art project, we were in lockdown. So I was um, recording um, over Zoom or getting people to send in their recordings of of how they felt. And how inclusive they felt the school education system is today and what would their ideal school look like. Um, so I gathered everyone's recordings and I, with my mum, we built a school isolation booth because I felt that um, in the new year there was quite a few people chatting about school isolation booths um, and I guess well, I wanted somewhere where people could sit and listen to the recordings and I thought that the school isolation booth like sim kind of like was I guess that was the word maybe like symbolic yeah uh, um to some people's experiences some people's experiences were very positive and some people's were negative and some people's were neutral um but I, in the future um because I've seen that I've, I made a recording obviously people can't visit the booth at the moment I would love to be able to exhibit it and for people to go and sit in the booth and to listen to everyone's thoughts. Yeah I mean kind of what you're saying around not being able to see people and, and kind of interact must have been a kind of an interesting challenge I guess in in creating the piece and um, I know you said you kind of used zoom and, and recordings did you feel that because obviously you know everyone started using zoom uh, in, in lockdown or lo lots of people have started using zoom did you find a uh, kind of a learning curve in in kind of recording and creating art over zoom or did you kind of just jump into it and 
kind of how did that that process go that learning process go uh, so i was using zoom before lockdown so i already knew of it as a as a thing um but i really love to be able to produce art with people um where maybe it doesn't feel like you're taking part in art um so being able to have to be involved in a creative piece but just be having a conversation with someone um because i think some people not everyone but some some people have um maybe a bit scared of participating in art they might have had a negative experience of school um and might not like to might not like to do creative activities but um i guess if you move, remove like barriers um and make it feel like a welcoming space then people can have their creative ideas shared um, yeah no i think when you're saying around kind of people's experiences but opinions of art i talked with um hazel brill last week who i think you might know around kind of finding art in places you wouldn't expect um mm -hmm. and i think kind of what you're talking about with, with schools and inclusivity in schools kind of ties in quite well you know if your only experience is you know draw this bowl of fruit in in year eight and you weren't very good at drawing you might kind of be a little bit i don't know if i want to be in an art piece type thing but actually mm -hmm. i think yeah it's really interesting kind of what you were saying that it almost people don't think of it as as art almost even though the the contributions that they're making are, are going towards um a piece it's, it's really interesting so kind of following on from that um kind of what did you what did you get How, what kind of pieces of kind of information was there any kind of common threads or anything that you found i know you said there was kind of mixed experiences yeah. was there anything that kind of jumped out to you when you were kind of putting all of the information together it, it was all quite mixed um i because of this difficulty and i guess like this time period that we're going through i wasn't able to speak to people that are currently in the education system so it was people that left um recently or adults or parents um i would love to have got more under 16s in, involved um, or under 18s but um i what i did find out that some people um really liked being um uh, attending special education needs schools um, and other people um, uh, kind of felt that that um, didn't give them as much opportunities as it would have done if they were able to go to their local state school um, and some people felt that there's, that there's been progress in making education inclusive but um, it's not quite there just yet there's still lots of other, um, other things that need to be improved yeah, I mean, I was quite lucky in that I went to a mainstream school um, as a wheelchair user. But kind of even within that, and you know, the school that I went to was, was excellent. Um, there was still kind of mixed experiences with, with other pupils um, and, and teachers and things. Um, I really, if, I wish I'd had more time to be able to kind of share my experiences with you. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things that life kind of got in the way, unfortunately. Um, but it sounds that you've kind of got some some really good input from from people that have kind of been through the the education system. I know you mentioned that you've created a kind of a school isolation booth to the kind of the aesthetic of the I guess installation. Um, obviously might not necessarily be able to kind of exhibit that at the moment uh, with, with the current situation um, which I imagine is quite tough um, what are your plans for kind of sharing the the piece? Uh, so I, re I recorded um, hope, as best as I could in, in my in my front room um, of, of what it's like to exhibit the isolation booth and that's up on YouTube um, I also would like to do some more work around um, education as next year um, in October uh, it will be the 40th year of the Education Act of 1981 um, which, which built on the, the last act I just spoke about um, and they, that act was the first time where the term um, handicapped was removed and replaced with special education needs um, and I, I wanted to explore if that's the suitable term for today yeah i mean it's it's kind of weird to think that 
it was as late as the 80s that they stopped using that but also it was as early as the 80s that they stopped using that it's really weird when you think about it that it sounds so old-fashioned yeah it's almost like yeah it's it's the kind of that weird thing that it feels really recent and really far away at the same time and i think you know it, it shows you know like like you said there are changes things have got better and um, but there's fortunately still still a bit of a ways to go uh, i think is that kind of what what you gathered from mm -hmm. the pieces yeah. as well still quite a lot of improvement that could be done yeah um so then kind of finally um I know you mentioned the, the the act next year kind of in in an ideal world kind of what would you want to do to to follow up would you want to do kind of the a sequel piece or kind of the another piece that follows on but it's not kind of directly related um i think it will be a follow up follow on follow on piece um so as i said i would be quite interested to explore um about the term special educational needs uh, and is, if that's suitable for for today cool sounds uh sounds exciting um and i uh, i look forward to to seeing it hopefully kind of mid to, to end of next year i guess i don't know the exact date of when the act was uh to, to know roughly when you be uh, you'll be putting it together and um, it all sounds really exciting um if people wanted to find your art or find you, where would they look? And so I have a website. Um, I'm still still sort of building it, so it's not as, as accessible as I would like it to be at the moment, yeah. but it's www.jstarns.com. So my surname is S-T-A-R-N-S. -S. Cool. Thank you very much, Jess. Thank you for that, Jess. That was really interesting. So that was the first of a two-part chat that I had. Um, the second part of that will be coming up uh, slightly later in the show after our joining from home segment. If anybody would like to uh, watch the film that Jess has put together that she talked about, uh, that is available on YouTube. Uh, her channel is called The Inclusive Art Practitioner. Inclusive Art Practitioner. Uh, and there is also be a, a link for that after the show on the highlights and links page uh, that you can access through the Together 2012 website. Our next piece is a dance film filmed by a young girl called Anna Heater um, and she is dancing uh, in her local park. <laughs>
Our next clip comes from EJ a little bit earlier in lockdown whilst uh, the schools were still on. Uh, she was tasked with creating a at-home um, exercise circuit for her to do in the garden. Um, she, she wrote this herself, she counted all the exercises and kind of how many reps of each one that she had to do uh, and then kind of filmed it to be put together into a film uh, and she wanted to share it on this youth episode uh, as something that kind of young people watching might not be able to kind of take part in or at least partly um, do, do some of. Um, she's quite fit um, so if you can't do all of that don't worry. Um, but she thought that we, as we normally talk about sport on, on Wednesday, I'm going to talk a little bit more on sport later in the show, um, that she would share this home workout routine that she put together uh, a little bit earlier in lockdown. On to Appdate then now. So Appdate is our regular segment that we started a few weeks ago and is going to carry on uh, for the next few weeks as well. That is based around some of our favourite apps, some apps that we use quite a lot, um, or some of the kind of apps that we, we've used that are that we would recommend. Um, this kind of segment uh, came about, it's, as we said, it's a newer segment, came about as part of the pilot test that's being run um, in Newham at the moment for the test and trace app um, around COVID. So we're doing these uh, app date sections to help promote that. So if you are in Newham, uh, please do download that app. Any feedback that you have on the app that you are using it, then send that uh, to Jew, send that to together. Um, also, for those of you that aren't in Newham that aren't able to access the trial, any suggestions or thoughts you might have on apps or how apps can be made uh, kind of accessible to you and also do send that information so that we can pass it along. So with that in mind, um, we talked a little bit last on the last youth show around kind of navigating the app store and I took you through a little bit of a quick recording um, of flicking through the app store and some games on the app store. Um, today I'm going to take you through a video uh, and a, a quick talk around an app called Photoshop Camera, uh, which is an app that I've been playing around with a little bit 
So the next clip is a screen recording of that, and then I will be uh, narrating kind of what's going on as we go through. So hopefully you enjoy it. So this is on the home screen, the app screen, going to search, typing in PSC, and then the top result is Photoshop camera. So I've already downloaded this, so I can just press open from the app store. So it opens onto the front camera. So you need to spin it around to the back one and if you're taking a selfie. So I'm using Robin as my photography subject. If anyone gets any motion sickness, I apologize for the wobbly start there. So it opens up just as a normal camera. And then if you tap the uh, button in the bottom left, it brings up all of these optional filters. So this is analog um, onto comic skies. So this kind of puts live filters uh, into the sky. Um, it does get a little bit funny around the edges of the trees there. Uh, not entirely sure why that is. Um, but as I'm not really going out anywhere at the moment to try that out, uh, I can only test it in the back garden. Uh, similar one, so you can, if you want a kind of night sky um, background, uh, this one gives you uh, under the sea. This one's based on the person. Um, Robin chilling out with uh, a seal and a turtle. Having a nice time. Again, you can see there's a number of uh, lenses uh, and kind of filters at the bottom. This is a pop art one. Um, and there's also kind of more basic ones that just kind of play with the, the effects. So I was just flicking through there on scenery. That kind of changes the hue and the saturation. Uh, and then the one we just looked at there was called Blue Skies. And that can give you some slightly better weather because it was a cloudy day. Um, they release new lenses and new filters quite often. So this is the lens library uh, and you can flick through. So they have all sorts of ones. So these are a couple of pride lenses um, that you can use if you want to add a pride theme to some of your photos. Um, and then this is another one called Prism that adds a kind of light distortion, uh, kind of lens flary uh, light diffusion effect. Um, so if you do like it, then you just click download at the bottom, which I've just done, uh, and then it will bring up with a button that says open, and that will then take you directly to it, and you just kind of swipe left or right on the screen uh, to go through the different ones. Uh, these are some other pictures that I've kind of created as I've been playing with the app, um, and you can also go through uh, to the camera roll as well. So if you don't want to take the photo there live, you can go to a photo that you already have saved uh, and then you can add filters uh, and effects to that. So that was the prism. Back to analog. Uh, and then we're going to look at uh, the artful uh, lens. So this kind of puts different styles on it, different um, kind of painting or, or, or effects onto the image. Uh, and then what you can also do uh, is have kind of live backgrounds. So this adds kind of an, an effect. I think there's a, something rotating. Um, this adds kind of clouds and space dust uh, moving over in the background. Um, and then you can also, if you were kind of more familiar, you can look at kind of each each component in a more traditional editing sense um, individually and, and affect those directly in the app as well. Um, so these are just a couple of images that I played messing around with uh, the app. So have a play at home uh, with some images as well. And these are just kind of some fun examples of what you can do. Hopefully you enjoyed that short video going through the Photoshop camera app. Uh, if you did enjoy that and you are interested in giving that a try, please create some photos and then send them to us at the show. Um, and we can kind of highlight the work on the show and we can talk about it a little bit. So hopefully some of you will do that and I look forward to seeing the pieces that you create. Our next clip is a poem called 21st Century. It's written by a young disabled person. It's about their experiences of being a young person uh, at the moment. Uh, it is being uh, read, it's audio only on, on the poem. Uh, so I have taken a picture or they've given a picture that they've drawn uh, that is sketched and coloured in that is of a dream catcher. So that is the image that is being uh, on screen whilst this poem is, is being read out. So thank you for that. And obviously that ties in with Wednesday being a normal poetry day. 
uh, and together poetry club that is running as a phone service at the moment so as i said before this is 21st century it's the 21st century what does that mean when it's still so hard to be seen and it's a thousand times hard to be heard do you even notice i'm here as a human being i am expected to be tough i think people forget that it's not always human nature the prospect of me shedding a tear is absurd but why should it be how can it be when i'm constantly forced to ask am i good enough we're growing up in a generation where we cannot speak out about how we feel the youth is not free we do not have a voice we are too young to have a view even though some of us go through more than adults ever will do with many of us feeling forgotten or like we don't belong, and still nobody believes this is even slightly wrong. It's time to make a change. Remember that we are not strange, because we are different. We fight to be equal. And to this injustice, I really hope there is no sequel. You are loved and supported, even if that isn't by the people around you. Trust in yourself, in the fact I don't want to put an age on youth. It is not about your ability to turn a page in a textbook or pass an exam, but your strength in being able to say, look, this is who I am. You like it or you don't. But I won't sit and lie about that, for that is justifying my existence. That I sh should not have to do. To me, that is youth. Confidence, change making. It's to fight for change, questioning stories that make the main page. Life is your stage. Make mistakes, learn from them. Youth and passion is to knowing where you stand, and no matter who tears you down, getting back up, starting again. Be proud and put the you into the word youth. I hope. We look back and say we did the right thing. And no matter where you are, or who you are, there was light at the end of the fight. Thank you for that wonderful poem. So, moving on now, back to our regularly scheduled programming, sort of. Uh, we have our normal uh, joining from home video uh, on a Wednesday. that is narrated by Jude Gosling as she takes you through some of the joining from home activities that can be found on the Together 2012 website. So over to the virtual Jew, uh, whilst she uh, relaxes at home today, I believe. So take it away, virtual Jew. Together 2012 is running a join in from home programme from our website, together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, join in from home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. All of our activities can be enjoyed by families at home, but we also have some of our favourite activities here from our family activity days, which we usually hold in the school holidays. Card making with pens, stickers and paper is also popular. You can show someone you're thinking of them by making them a special card, and if it can't be delivered safely, then send it with a send a photograph with a personal message or keep it till later. Here we have instructions for making a sock puppet, a storage jar or night light or a lunchbox or storage box, all of which are really popular with our family activity days. And you can click on each of these links to get full instructions. So with the sock puppet, for example, you have lots of instructions with photographs to show you exactly what to do. Same with the storage jar.
and same with the lunch box or storage box. And you can see how effective it is just to use very, very simple techniques. Everyone is completely unique. The Pop-Up Poetry Club meets on a Wednesday morning. We also run regular poetry projects and poetry cafes. We're inviting you to write or sign a poem on the theme of Together and send it to us to share on social media. We're also going to be publishing an anthology of the Together poems in November and everybody who contributes will get a copy of the physical book. On to a little bit of nature watch now. So normally we have a video from uh, either Precious or Merlot in their kind of gardens or uh, forests that they are in at the moment. However, as this is the youth takeover, we thought we would have uh, some youth pets. So the first video is of uh, EJ's cat called Baby, um, who was having a bit of a moment, I think is the best description. Um, the other morning, uh, and was doing her best impression of uh, Precious or Merlot uh, and was chasing her own tail. Uh, the photos that are going to be after that short clip, uh, there is three photos that we decided were quite funny uh, that are uh, the cat doing their best impression as Batman uh, or Batwoman, uh, depending on, on your choice, because uh, she's lying on the, on the rug uh, with the sun and it's making her ears look like uh, the cowl of Batman. On to our usual Paralympics segment now. So this is normally a, a competition between the two ends of the virtual sofa with Jew and Julie up in Newham and Robin and myself down in the West Midlands. Uh, I don't have the same collection of clockwork animals, people, uh, vehicles and anything else that Jew might have as a clockwork uh, form. So we've decided to link in today's Paralympics with the gaming section that we normally have on a Wednesday. So Robin and I raced each other on Forza 6, which is a Xbox uh, racing game, car racing game. Uh, we had one lap each around Spa, which is the uh, host of the Belgian Grand Prix, which is where the Grand Prix was um, last weekend. So normally Robin and I would pick a side and then uh, whether we win or lose determines who would get the medal for their teddy. However, as I am by myself this week, uh, you can compete at home. So if you are playing along at home, pick either the top screen or the bottom screen, uh, one of which is Robin, one of which is me in the following clip uh, for who you think will be the winner of the race. Uh, and then you will be able to uh, play along at home. For those of you competing at home, if you do have a teddy and a medal uh, or any sort of uh, trophy that you wish to give to them uh, and you win, then take a picture, send it over to us at the show uh, and we will um, have a, a collection, we'll put it on the highlights and links page uh, of all of the successful teddies from this week's competition. Welcome to the Belgian Grand Prix. Today we are racing. On the top screen you have me as Josh as youth and on the bottom we have Robin as the not youth in today's competition. And here I am piling into the first corner. Uh, and missing the first corner. I've managed to... Slightly wide. To, to get round that better than I normally do. That's, uh, that's quite okay, a difficult I'm, first corner. I've avoided the wall, got a nice straight line, cut through into the corner. Excellent. Josh seems to be ever so slightly ahead of me. So we've got through the first kind of complex one to the really long back straight now. 
anyone that's racing fans will be very familiar with this stretch of road. It's amazing how difficult it is to keep the car in a straight line <laughs> as well. Got a bit of grass there, but from both of us. This, this corner always gets me, it's a really long corner. <laughs> Slight drift from me there, might not necessarily have been the fastest way to get around the corner, but it was the most stylish. Oh, damn me, look, I got a little bit of drift there, and actually it's probably one of the best. Oh, it's going too soon. <laughs> it was going so well for you as well. Oh yeah, no, I'm keeping it there though, holding the line. We're fairly close, about halfway through the lap at this point. Oh, I might down. be outside the racing line there. But... Yeah, ro Robin's gone a little bit wide up on that corner. I've managed to, uh, to keep it in line just about, a little bit squirrely. Yeah, does that mean we can see now that you're just a tiny bit in front of me? <laughs> so, final couple of corners. Before we get into a, a run down on the back straight. Well, it looks at this point, due to the split screen, that I'm ahead, but I'm not. <laughs> oh, yeah, a bit of a wander, a bit of a wiggle there, kicking out off the corner. Now we're on to the, the kind of final final section of the lap. We've got a couple of sweeping bends here. Fairly tight competition. This is onto good. this small back straight. Yeah, and this get is into Josh really a very shows, difficult corner. Shows me the way here and to get round. Although that's the best corner I've ever done on this circuit. It's got to be safe. And we're both onto the final straight, coming up to the finish line. And I take it in a 2.18 as opposed to Robin's 2.23. I know, but still that's that sort of lap record for me. So <laughs> I'm chuffed with that. So if you selected correctly on who won, then well done. Congratulations to everyone at home that picked the top screen. Uh, so Ju and Julie, uh, if you... Per if... Congratulations to everyone playing along at home. Uh, especially Ju and Julie, if you picked the top screen, uh, then congratulations. Um, on to our next segment now. So we've had our gaming fill, uh, now on to our sports fill. So last week I talked a little bit about the new film Rising Phoenix. So our next clip is a, a chat uh, that I had with uh, Robin, uh, my other regular co-host in the West Midlands office. Um, who's not youth either, to highlight, and with um, EJ, who's my younger sister, and is also a para-athlete. So we were having a quick chat about what we'd watched so far on the show. So please do enjoy. So welcome to the show. Uh, for balance, I'm a middle youth. So we've got the youth youth in, in EJ. Say hello. Hello. Uh, and we have the old youth in uh, Robin. Say hello. Oh yeah, hello. So, we, last week on the show, um, I talked a little bit about Rising Phoenix, which was a new documentary that was being released uh, on Wednesday of last week around the kind of history of the Paralympic Games and the Paralympic movement and how that developed. Um, we're all kind of very sporty and para-sport people. Uh, you, you giggling? <laughs> um, Emily's not used to being on camera, and as, uh, as you can tell, don't worry, that was me on the first couple of weeks of the show. Um, so we've we've watched the first half roughly. Oh, yeah. I think we've watched about an hour. I think we've got about kind of thirty five, forty minutes, um, left roughly of the film. Um, but I wanted to fifty six minutes. There you go. Just the observant one out of the three of us. <laughs> Um, we wanted to have a kind of quick chat about what you thought of the film so far, um, kind of as a aspiring para sports competitor, athlete, athlete. There we go, uh, and an experienced para sport um, athlete and Paralympian. So we'll go to we'll go to the young one first. So young one. Uh, what did you think of the of the show so far? I thought it was really cool and really interesting, and how it's not putting like how it's saying that the Paralympics shouldn't be like second to the Olympics; they should be on like the same level. Yeah, 
And I'm just going to talk a lot about kind of the, the early years of the, the Paralympics um, and kind of how that started. Um, they haven't quite got to kind of the 80s yet when we're watching it. Um, but obviously that is kind of My era. your era yeah. of, of, of Paralympics. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of watching the show and how you felt kind of watching it? Yeah, I, I mean, so far I've, I've been in the main enjoyed it. I was a little bit worried um, at the beginning when they started talking about superheroes, but actually it really subtly but quite quickly changes to talking about sports people, and I think that was done really, really well. I mean, they may go back, but uh, hopefully it will kind of continue. And it, yes, it does kind of detail perhaps more than other people might some of the issues around people's impairments, let's remember they're making a feature film but I think yeah. that the, the primary um, drive is about it being all about sport and about sporting excellence and sporting triumph and actually the drive and the motivation that leads someone to becoming a sports person yeah and I think you know it, it starts out it has a, a big section on, on London 2012 and totally an important uh event for, for together um in the kind of that is how what together spawned out of um really um and i think it was really kind of what you were saying there's a section with uh johnny peacock who's a british sprinter that said kind of you know in in the run-up to london it was you know the first question was always about how he lost his leg um and then all of a sudden there was a complete shift um and it was just about the sport and him as an athlete um and I think that was kind of really interesting and, and, and really important. I know you felt a little bit at the start, you were kind of being like, oh, is it just going to be all about why and how they're disabled rather than the, the sport? Do you want to talk about... And actually it changed, do you want to talk about that? Just, like, not... Yeah, like, when... <laughs> <laughs> Where usually a lot of people, um, when you first meet them, they're like... You're like, are you okay? Or what did you do? <laughs> Whatever. And I, like, if if they only had people who had like an illness or an incident or whatever that caused them to um, have to do para sport rather than just well, not <laughs> um, not para sport. Yeah. Then it would it would make everybody think that it's that you have to have gone through something horrific to be disabled. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, it, there, there is some of that in there, you know, because they are talking to people that have gone through things like that. Um, but, you know, it also, you know, it, it focuses on them as, as athletes. And, I, you know, we all love sport and watching it, I was kind of really disappointed that I've got to wait another year to watch the Olympics and the Paralympics. <laughs> yeah. um, and, kind of, you know, watching some of those highlights and things from London, you get, you know, you get chills. Um, but I know you were sitting there as someone that's training and I mean I compete at the moment because no events as someone that's training at the moment about halfway through you just went I just want to go training now <laughs> and I thought it was really yeah. funny that it kind of had that effect on you I mean what, like, what... that's so cool I'm going to do that go training <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I thought that um, it was kind of good how they showed how someone was able to take part in the sport that they loved or wanted to take part in and how it was adapted very very simply you know and, and that, yeah, that goes you know I say simply you know there could be complicated wheelchairs there could be complicated bits of equipment to attach for example that um, how someone with no arms holds a sword for fencing but it wasn't it was still about the drive and the motivation to be a sports person so it wasn't about what did you overcome to become this sports person. It was like, what did you change to follow your dreams? And there's a, there's a real difference in approach to it. It's a completely positive approach. And, and for me, as a watcher, to, who, you know, who took part in three Paralympic Games, um, just like Emily, I wanted to be in the pool. <laughs> I, that's, you know, I was a swimmer. I wanted to be swimming. You know, there is the, the, the feeling of seeing somebody particularly of your own nation um, as part of a team watching the Union flag get raised and the national anthem plays is fantastic. 
And yeah, I'm just just supremely envious of Johnny Peacock to have had eighty thousand people shouting his name. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, we, we've said we've said quite a lot. You know, it's obviously we've still got kind of the second half to watch, which we're all kind of looking forward to, and um, when we get some time, hopefully later today. Um, but yeah, we've we've kind of really enjoyed it so far, haven't we? And uh, yeah, kind yeah. Of, Bring on the second half. <laughs> Eagerly awaiting the uh, the second half. So thank you both uh, for for coming on, for coming into my your office uh, <laughs> to, to to film this. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Any final thoughts before we we uh, sign off and go and look at some photos? I believe. No, just I would recommend anyone to watch it and just take it as a as, as a kind of like you know biopic almost really yeah and, and enjoy it and enjoy the joy that other people get from it um no <laughs> <laughs> cool thank you hopefully you enjoyed that chat and you're now uh, inspired to go and watch the film uh if you still need a little bit more of inspiration uh the next video is a collection of pictures that i've taken uh, at the London 2012 Paralympics when I was there. Um, the majority of these photos are all from London um, and they were taken with a digital SLR camera. Uh, the final selection of pictures uh, that are inside the Aquatic Centre um, are actually taken on my iPhone and they are from the Para World Championships uh, in September of last year because um, we weren't able to get swimming tickets um, for the Paralympics, unfortunately. Um, for the photos of the Paralympics, there's a mix. There's some kind of shots within the park um, and some kind of architectural shots of, of the different venues and arenas. Um, and then there are pictures from the Fiverr side uh, CP football, from the wheelchair tennis and also from the wheelchair basketball. So hopefully you enjoy those photos.
Hopefully you enjoyed those photos. So now onto the second part of the chat I had with Jess Starnes uh, from a little bit earlier in the show. In this next clip, we talk a little bit about her experiences on a recent uh, artist retreat that she's been on and some of the skills that she learned whilst she was on it. So welcome back, Jess. Um, we talked to you a little bit earlier in the show around your uh, art piece around education and special education needs. Um, on a completely different note, um, and completely different from your normal work, you've just been on a two-week kind of artist residency. Want to tell us a little bit about kind of what you did and how you found that? Yes, yeah, so I've just been um, taking part in the light Lightform Lab um, with the Old Market Theatre in Hove, and um, I've been learning how to use Lightform, which is a uh, Project projection mapping, so you can use Lightform to scan an object and then project images or footage onto the object. So I've been exploring. Um, so I'd say I'm I'm originally from Brighton, um, and I've been I've always been interested in this local building material called Bungaroosh. So Bungaroosh is only found, um, mostly only found in Brighton uh, from the mid 18th to 19th centuries, and it's. Um, a building, it's a composite building material of, I guess, lots of local um, local materials such as like stones, sand, pebbles, chalk, flint, um, and they, what they used to do is they used to use all these build materials to build um, build the houses um, and set it in hydraulic, I can't say it, hydraulic lime, um, and um, and it was it was kind of to get around the brick tax when. Prince okay. Regent moved to Brighton. I guess he, people wanted to live there, and it was just a small, a small village. Really, it wasn't. Yeah. It was tiny, um, and people wanted to live there, so they had to build quite quickly. And I guess there was maybe, maybe not so many bricks around. So they they had nice fronts, Regency fronts, but then the sides and the back, of the buildings are made out of this. I guess found found materials. I've never heard. Is it Bungaroosh? Yeah, Bungaroosh. Never heard of that. It sounds really interesting. So it's kind of like the the fronts are nice, I guess. They used all the expensive bits, materials on the bit you could see, and then kind of yeah. went, this will do. Yeah. <laughs> That's really interesting. Like, Not no all idea. the buildings, but most of the buildings. I guess they yeah. cut, cut corners a little bit. That's really interesting. Really kind of cool piece of history I guess. Yeah. So um, I um, project, projected onto, onto stones um, images of Bungaroosh and then images of the I guess, photographs of the environment of Brighton like the Regency buildings um, and then also um, I you can download images from the Brighton um, Museum's website um, so I downloaded older images from the early 19, late 1800s. Um, and included them as well. Cool. Um, that sounds really interesting. So is this something you've kind of played around with before in projection mapping or is this kind of completely no. new to you? No, this is brand new. I just learned how to use Lightform in the last two weeks. How did you find that? Because we've talked a lot about kind of learning new skills um, during lockdown and um, what learning new skills in general. So kind of how did you find picking up uh, kind of completely new software? Um, it was a bit tricky at first. I had difficulty with my coordination, so there were some bits where it took me a while to, to get the dexterity to do it. Um, but once I played around with it a bit and I understood how it worked, um, I now am now finding it a great, well, an accessible art tool for myself that I would like to hopefully use again. Um, it's not it's not a cheap piece of software, um, <laughs> so I don't know if I'll personally be able to buy it myself, but I would like to be able to play around with it again. <laughs> yeah, no, it uh, sounds interesting. We'll maybe look forward to a projection mapping piece in the future from you as well. Then go with your, uh, your project next year. You can project some old school buildings onto some new school buildings. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you again, uh, Jess. Finally, to finish up, we have a little bit of clarinet from EJ Surgener. So this first piece that you're going to hear uh, is a piece that she's learning for her upcoming 
um, grade three exam uh, called The Young Prince and the Young Princess. Uh, the next three pieces is going to be a small challenge for those at home. So she's going to play a popular piece of music and then you're going to have to uh, guess for what that piece is. So piece number one. So for those playing along at home, that first piece was the Imperial March from Star Wars. Piece number two. If you guessed Under the Sea from The Little Mermaid for that, then you would have been correct. Now on for our final piece. And that final piece was indeed a part of Eleanor Rigby by The Beatles. So if you got three out of three at home, well done. Thank you for tuning in to the Youth Takeover. And we look forward to seeing you back on Friday with a full cast of hosts.